Hello, chemistry students. We're going to learn how to write total or complete and net ionic equations in this video. Two things you're going to need to find quickly first are a solubility rules or chart and a monatomic uh, and polyatomic ion sheet. So here is a solubility chart that I am going to hand out to my students and hopefully you have one. You might even have to have these rules memorized and then you might have to have a list or have all of the common monatomic and polyatomic ions memorized also. So before we get started, make sure you have those two things. Next, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to react uh, sodium hydroxide and iron 3 chloride, which is also called ferric chloride. I have them actually right here. I've made one into a solution and the other one into a solution, and here's what they look like as solids. I'm going to react these two a little later in the video after we write the uh, net and total ionics. So I'm going to put these aside and let's get started on writing the actual chemical change first. So these are the ions that you have present, sodium hydroxide, and to write that chemical correct, you write NaOH, and then I made it soluble in water, which is aqueous, and then I took iron and chlorides, and I also dissolved those and made those aqueous. That needs to be FeCl3 to write that compound correctly, because you need the net charge to be zero. And again, with any net ionic and uh, or any ionic reactions, one or more reactants have to be aqueous um, that means dissolved in water. So here's the chemical change uh, written as a chemical reaction without the products, sodium hydroxide and iron 3 chloride aqueous, and it is going to be a double replacement. So what that means is this sodium ion is going to switch and try to bond with the chloride ion, and the iron 3 plus ion is going to try to bond with the hydroxide. And hopefully one of them will have a chemical change, um, and the solubility chart here will help us predict it. So I highlighted the iron and the sodium. We're going to need those soon. So let's start writing the chemical reaction right now, and the um, total ionic and the net ionic. Okay. So here we go. The chemical equation, what you need to do is you have to write down our, our reactants. Okay, so I'm going to pull this back out right here. So we have uh, sodium hydroxide, so we'd write NaOH, and then that was AQ. And we had iron 3 chloride, so FeCl3AQ. And then they're going to switch partners, so we're going to have the sodium bond with the chloride. But again, remember sodium's a plus one and chloride's a minus one. So they're going to bond like that, and we'll look up the state of matter in a second. And then the iron is going to bond, or try to bond, with the hydroxide. Hydroxide's only a 1 minus, so we're going to need parentheses and a 3, because we'll need 3 hydroxides. And then we'll look up the state of matter. Um, let's balance it uh, first, so before we even do the states of matter. So there's one sodium on each side, uh, three hydroxides. So the first step is maybe let's put a three right there and make that three hydroxides. Then there's one iron, one iron, three chlorides. I don't have three chlorides, I only have one. So I'll put a three in front of here. Um, and then actually it's balanced if I put some ones there. Next is to do the state of matter. So I need to look up sodium chloride. So sodium and then chloride. That's aqueous, so you'd put AQ. And then we look up iron and hydroxide, iron 3, and then hydroxide is right here. Uh, that means it's a solid or not soluble. And so I have my chemical equation written now. What I need to do next, though, is take everything that has an AQ and break it into what are called dissociated ions. Um, that word, again, is called dissociated or dissociated. Okay, so that's the next step. So that means I actually have three uh, sodium ions, and they're aqueous. I have three hydroxide ions, and they're also aqueous. I have an iron three plus ion that's aqueous. And I have three chloride ions that are also aqueous. Now, I'd like to kind of put the other side here, but I don't have enough room. So I'm going to go down here and write the products. Again, if it's got an AQ, you dissociate those ions. So three sodium ions and three chloride ions. And then the rule is if it has a S, an L, or a G, you do not dissociate it. And we'd write it like this. It just really, you just recopy it. Then what we're looking for are called spectator ions. Spectator ions are ions that do not uh, participate in the chemical change. 
they actually remain unchanged on both sides. So it's kind of like playing memory match. So you want to look on this side of the arrow on the reactants and look for a product that matches. And that's sodium. So this is a spectator ion. And what happens is I remove that ion and I won't write it in the uh, net ionic. And then these hydroxides, they end up in a solid form, so I'm not going to get rid of those. Same with the iron, but these chlorides are an exact match on both sides, so they're a spectator ion. So when I rewrite my, uh, what's called my net ionic, I'm only going to include the ions that create the chemical change. So here are the two ions that are going to create uh, what is called a precipitate, the iron hydroxide, the iron 3 hydroxide, you could also call this ferric hydroxide, makes the precipitate. So now's a good time for us to see um, this as a reaction. But before that, I want to show you one more thing. One of the things that you can do in chemistry is think of things in particulate, meaning if you could zoom in on the inside of these beakers, okay, so let me put the beakers here. So here's my sodium hydroxide and here's my iron, or sorry, yeah, sodium hydroxide and my iron 3 chloride. And I've dissolved them. They used to look like this, but I've dissolved them. They, those are the solids, and I've made them aqueous. You can think of them as loose sodium ions and hydroxide ions, and iron and chloride ions. They're dissociated. They're dissolved. Watch what happens when I mix these two together. So I'm going to slide this over here. Um, looking for evidence of a chemical change. I have color change, and I do have what's called a precipitate. If I were to let this settle, um, I would get a, a whole bunch of solid sitting at the bottom here. That is the iron hydroxide, and then the loose sodium ions and chloride ions, these are the sodium, these are chloride, are floating around dissociated in solution. So again, this is my product, and all of that kind of brown solid is a precipitate and that's at the bottom and again that is our uh, this is called a precipitate and I made little labels for everything here so here we go so these are products these are reactants these are both aqueous solutions this down here is the precipitate okay I put that right over the top this stuff and that's that iron hydroxide, and this is still an aqueous solution. And again, the key here is always with these that we have to have one or more reactants dissolved into water. You have to have these water molecules in there. So here's a test for you. I'm going to give you one to try on your own, and what I'd like you to do is pause the video and then see if you can get the right answer, and then I'll show you the answers. Okay, so one, two, three, pause it, and then here are the answers. So if I take these and react them, Potassium phosphate and calcium nitrate, here are the answers. So here's the uh, chemical equation. Uh, you have the, uh, I'm going to slide this over the top here, the total ionic and the net ionic. And the spectators in this case are potassium and nitrate. For me to do this correctly, I had to use my ion sheet, I had to follow my solubility rules, and I had to know that the one that produces the precipitate uh, is the one that ends up in the net ionic equation, and those ions created that chemical change. Again, I hope this video helped. The whole theme was how to write and do total and net ionic equations. And again, don't forget, you really do need to have a solubility chart um, and your ion sheet uh, handy to do these correct.